pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Ashley, can I have a roll call, please? Platt. Here. Bedrock. I just want to let you know, Council Member Bedrock contacted me on Friday, indicated that he would not be able to attend this uh, evening's meeting, but he did give me some information and comments that I'll share regarding the budget uh, discussion. Okay. Melby. Here. Jerdy. Here. Erickson. Here. Briggs? Here. Cavalier? Here. Here. Okay. Regular agenda. We're having discussion and request funds for organizations. Um, and also discussion for a preliminary tax levy. So I guess I'll uh, put it in Corky's court. Okay. Uh, we did put on the agenda each of the items uh, for which we have had a request. I do want to let you know that uh, the Golden Link request uh, has been changed, and that's uh, because of my inability to find the original request. Uh, Councilman Melby had talked about a $90,000 request. I do actually have it at $91,980. In the uh, email that was originally sent to Ryan, the finance director, and myself. For some reason, that line, City of Crookston, did not show. Um, so we uh, contacted uh, the Golden Link and got in additional information, and um, that's the number that they are requesting. Um, and we can deal with these as a group, or we can deal with them uh, alternately. Uh, what I can tell you is that they have made that request, um, and that is up from $78,000, which they have received, uh, I'm gonna say for at least two years, if not more. Uh, one of the reasons stated for the additional request is that they now pay for snow removal, uh, which they did not pay for in the past because the city did it. Um, the impact on the budget, uh, would be to uh, raise that percentage uh, for this request would be approximately 3.5%. Each 1% that the budget uh, levy is increased is equal to approximately $25,233. $25,233.84. Questions? <clears throat> Comments? On the Golden Link there, what, uh, they haven't had a raise in how long? You said a couple years? You know, I, I haven't been a part of that, but I know for at least two years, I think um, it's been five. Liaison, Council Member Melby may have some info on that. I think they said it was five years that there hasn't been an increase on that. And, uh, you know, basically, they try to do more fundraising, they try to do, you know, uh, doing more with the meals and that type of thing. The, uh, it's not only just the snow removal, it's also the garbage collection, it's the other utilities like we're experiencing with our, you know, uh, budget. Um, it doesn't include really any any uh, frivolous things. It's uh, it's more or less to to help make the, the the budget meet. And so what they they do know that if they don't get the entirety of that, you know that'll either cutting down some programs, or uh, going out and doing more fundraising, hoping for you know that type of thing to increase. I mean that's how you get it. They are uh, uh, starting, I think it's the 1st of October coming up here, that the meals are going to go up uh, some. I'm not going to say what because they haven't hammered it down for sure, I don't know. Uh, but the meals are going to go up and the price of uh, membership dues is going to go up. 
So they are looking at raising, you know, some of their own. Um, the trouble, like I said, though, is that there hasn't been a, a movement in the last five years. So, I mean, if it had been going up 2% or whatever, like the rest of, it, of the, these funds, uh, they would be right at that 91,000, something like so, that. But. So Wayne, um, I don't know if you know this or not, what is their total budget? It says right here. I, I believe it is $299,000. $756. Two hundred. So okay, we're that ours would if this contribution were made, that would be approximately uh, thirty percent, approximately. And then the other revenue sources that they have are, is all um, fundraising. Is that am I correct on that? Well, they've got donations. They've got fundraisers. They've gotten some grants. Um, they get some memorials. Uh, then, you know, they do have their sales of, of uh, beverages and, and uh, food. And uh, they do, like, uh, recycling cards, um, the senior meals. They make a little bit on the trips that they have out there. And uh, that's pretty much, that's so has, pretty much has what there, has there Has their fundraising... How, what's the um, trend of their fundraising the, the past few years? Has it been going up, down, or staying flat? The fundraising itself, it, it's gone up when they have a project. You know, like that freezer that they talked to us about helping out. So they went out and, and they fundraised for the freezer and got some grants. You know, so I mean, it's, it's not that they aren't trying to do some of that. Um, this is going to be, you know, this is mainly for day-to-day -day operations as far as um, the janitor, the utilities, that type of thing. And then uh, what they're fundraising, that's where they can add on or do a... Uh, they do some different community things, like have a speaker come in and, you know, types of things, entertainment that they would have. So they would be cutting back on that and trying to raise more donations and things like that to fund those things. This is for the basics of, to keep the, the place going. They're doing a lot of remodeling. They, they've had to do some updates with their, uh, their kitchen and uh, some power and stuff like that. But So, I mean, the only thing that gets me a little bit squeamish is when I've talked to them when they came in here and did their presentation, they do accept, you know, they have a, I don't, I don't remember what the gentleman said, how many members out do you know? outside the city of Crookston that, you know, our tax dollars would possibly, I guess you could say, support. But I mean, it's, I, I, I remember it not being as much as initially I was thinking. No, there's probably, I think there was like 25 to 30 folks that belong, or from outside, you know, say like from Euclid or <coughs> that type of thing. And, uh, so that actually brings in money more than it so, right? Right. It it yes, and they in, they encourage these folks that if they're coming in to use the facility to become members of the facility. Right. What's their meal wise? Is you know since they've gone public with that, uh, that must be a little increase. Uh, how long has that been open? So where are they? Coming? Well, it's been open for a few months now, but it's <laughs> it's kind of a tough deal to figure out. I mean, you have to really sit on, and I haven't done that entirely. Because, you know, the uh, salaries are going up. You know, you got a janitor that comes in for a couple more hours. Um, that's what I told them, that they have to go back and try to make those things be self-sustaining. Um, because if you're going to add to the mix, you're going to have to make it get covered by the, the charges. Um, so the only thing where they've also gotten into a little bit more of is they got with the Legion and the VFW closing. Now when they have their meetings, they have them down there, and so they got a janitor that cleans up after them. And it's, you know, so it's, they don't really make enough off of those uh, meetings to cover some of the stuff they do. You know, like I say, the janitor, the tissue, the, you know, all the amenities that they use down there at that time. But 
but it's a, a great place for those guys to meet again now since they don't have their own rooms, club rooms. And so they, and they serve the free meal on the Veterans on Memorial Day. They do, you know, they've taken those kinds of things over from what the Legion and the Vets used to do. So there are a few more expenses on there. Um, we could have got into it and really dug down, but I mean, it's, uh, it, it's like I say, that's, that's not my job. So it's only been three, three, four months. Yeah, it hasn't been that long, so you're not going to see the whole no. shoot and match. It seems like there's a heck of a crowd down there now at lunch, I mean, at the car-wise. And, you know. I guess I look at it as, you know, this council and previous councils always has made a comment that, you know, we support, <coughs> you know, not only our youth in activities, but we also support our seniors. So we got to find a way to... Uh, you know, increase their, what they're asking, I guess. And, you know, and have, now that if the Legion and the VFW are holding meetings, <coughs> I feel our vets are very important to this community too, so. This is our only, you know, thing for the older people that we really put on. I mean, we have stuff at the CSC once in a while, but, I mean, it, you know, just look at the people that go down there. I've stopped in a couple times and, you know, it gives the, our elderly, you know, constituents a place to go and, if they play cards. I mean, there's there's somewhere for them to go. I guess is what you know. We don't we own the building. Um, I don't believe so. No, no we, we do not own the building. That's the. Uh, we it's used to. I think we did. I think perhaps some decades ago. Yeah, I, I know. I didn't get. Now. She wasn't there, so I couldn't get the history part of it that they've got back when. I know it was. Uh, oh gosh, who was it? Lil Snyder and Bill Kiwo and June Schaefer, that crew that kind of put this together and got it going. So that's, that tells you the age of it. Um, and uh, I think it opened, they said, in 87. And so that uh, they got their bylaw. That's when their bylaws were stamped anyway. It was from 87, I believe. And they have about, well, they gave me a little write up to here. We have about 300 paid members who provide service for our service and food for our members. Our kitchen is licensed and inspected by the state, and they do have a liquor license for beer and wine. Um, we have two paid positions using city funds, a manager and a, and a janitor. Uh, they have a full-time cook and three part-time positions paid for through food sales and the assistant cook, dishwasher, and waitress. Uh, we have about 18 committees, a grant committee, and uh, their grant committee has done very well over the last few years. Uh, it's tougher and tougher getting grants because you've got to be able to match that 50-50 when you're doing it. <coughs> Things are, aren't cheap. Um, their mission statement, as I said, is to provide a place for adults 55 plus to gather, be inspired, and to enjoy life. That was... Their, their whole thing, and like I said, like Dale said, that the, uh, um, they took it through the uh, park board saying, well, we gotta do something for our, our senior citizens if we're gonna be doing it for our youth, and this was kind of the answer, and that's kind of where we're at. Um, they have a place to meet, they have a place to play cards, they have a place to have a lunch. Um, a lot of them, you know, are, would be having to take uh, home deliver meals, I would guess, if they couldn't, but here they get a chance to get out and visit and and do that. They have some uh, card playing, canasta, that type of thing. You can learn how to play smear or pinochle or cribbage. And they even offer free guitar lessons. So they're not making money on these. It's all free stuff, just to let you know. Well, do, so do we need a motion or on each of these line items, or how do you, how do we want to proceed? I think that you want to address each of them individually. Do you need a consensus or a motion? I think you would want a motion. I make a motion to approve the ninety-one thousand. What is it total? Nine hundred eighty dollars. Ninety-one thousand nine hundred eighty dollars, and add that to our overall budget. And I can, as we get to item three point zero two tonight, I can. Tell you the impact that will have. I'll second that motion, Your, Your Honor. Got a first and second. Thank you. Further discussion? 
I would just like to make sure that they are being sustainable. So like reviewing their food costs and make sure that they're at least breaking even, I think is an important piece. And I think it's important that we're supporting them, but also making sure that it's not just a random number and that they're actually just being sustainable on those things. I agree. There has been a question. Excuse me. There has been an increase in people attending their, that place every day. If you drive by there certain hours, there's a lot more people there than there ha has ever been. So it's moving. They're moving ahead, but the, they need uh, to keep moving ahead. So just better business acumen is all I'm asking. <laughs> right. I guess if they could have a tighter, you know, budget line item, something. Yeah. I mean, for... it's, it's like we've all been asking of all of our departments to to increase the fees, make sure we're not doing stuff that costs costs us money. You know, instead of like breaking even, I don't know if they're, you know, we can't run their business for them, but we can ask to say, hey, you know, if you're doing these activities, maybe you can figure out a way to just break even if you're losing well, money. I, I don't know. And I think one of the things is, and I don't know if it's good or bad, that I, I'm on that board now, and so I have weighed in on the business end of it there as far as mm -hmm. having to increase your cost or your, you know, your prices and, and being more accountable to it. And also, you know, um, the council does want to, or the city does want to keep funding it, but they got to know what it's going to, and it's got to be known that it's run properly and all that good stuff. So, so I have a, I have a question. I mean, we're donating, uh, or not donating, but we're we're sticking a considerable amount of money. Is this a, is this a something that we should have a? I mean, I know Wayne is down there, but I don't think you have to be as a, as a city person. But should we have a city board member yep. like a? I mean, I'm like a liaison to the board. I am the liaison from here, yeah. and so I am it, a board it's, member. It's, so. it's, it's not really directed, is it? It's just you just are doing it, correct? No, no, no. no, no, no. He's, he's a liaison. Actually, he's a liaison designated by the city to work with okay. the Golden Link. So, uh, like, if Wayne is off the board, then somebody would be directed to be a liaison. So, if some, yeah. if uh, Wayne were not a council member. Another council member okay. would be yeah. uh, the liaison. So who was before you? Appointed. I don't know. There was really that. we'd never had it before. Yeah. Okay, Just, so this is new. It, it is new, so it is going to be a mayor appointment from. Okay, that's what I was asking. I didn't think it was. No. Okay. Wayne was willing, since he's a member of the Golden Link, to step up, and we asked if he'd be a liaison to the board. He agreed. And Perfect. So. I th yeah, I think it's something we should do. Going forward, so yeah. Any other discussion? Have the vote, Ashley, please. Yes, Your Honor. Platt? Aye. Melby? Aye. Gertie? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Capillaire? Aye. Russell? Aye. And I do want to indicate uh, in Councilman Vedbrotten's uh, email to me, he would recommend uh, Golden Link for being a uh, one that he would favor. Okay, motion carries, let's move on. The Tri-Valley Opportunity Council, uh, they are asking for funding for the Tri-Valley bus. Uh, they do have six routes in Crookston. Uh, they are uh, obviously employing six individuals. They run routes from five o'clock in the morning till uh, later at night. They are uh, attempting to procure additional buses. Uh, this is not the entire sum for the transportation department budget, and it is consistent with, I believe, what was asked for in the past. I think it's a good, uh, um, that's the word I'm looking for, a good source for our community that can't ride the bus uh, or don't have vehicle transportation. Mm -hmm. Jitter, we don't have a cab system at all in right. Crookston. I mean, yeah. don't have any <laughs> transportation outside. I think it's a great thing in the summer, too, for the kids. They, yep. They'll pick them up when their parents are at work, and they'll bring them out to the ball field for their stuff and make sure that they make it home. And and that, that also helps on, on that end of things, too. So They can buy a pass at Joe for that, for yes. kids to just get on. You can buy a pass, and, yep. Yeah. Yeah, they even do it for this. <coughs> Excuse me, they even take kids to school and pick up. Do a uh, motion. To I'll make a motion. <laughs> Is it for the fourteen thousand five hundred dollars? Yes. Joe made the motion. Thank I'll you. I'll second it. Second by Clayton. Thank you. Further discussion. 
Mm. What's there? I mean, you said you're looking at more buses and whatever. What uh, What's your time frame on that? I don't know the particular time frame, but I do know that they've had difficulty uh, procuring new buses. So at some point, and it may be continuing, they're having to rent buses. Um, so they're trying to get them as soon as they can. Well, I, I do drive the bus down there, and they've gotten, I think, one or two new ones, but they're, uh, you know, they run, like you said, six of them a day here um, for shift, and that's not that's not counting the ones that are going out of town to Fargo and to uh, Manoman or, you know, other places that they go to, Red Lake Falls. I mean, you don't go a day without, when you're driving, that people don't go, I don't know what we would do if we didn't have the bus. And you're taking a lot of folks to the, to the hospitals and the clinic, and uh, they subsidize it through the clinic and the hospital, which is a great deal. They help them a lot. And so, I mean, it, uh, this 14 is a drop in the bucket for what it costs them to run that thing and for replacing. So, I mean... Just maintenance um, alone, I mean, I can't even cover that. No, really no, no, I don't. I, I mean, I don't know where they got that number, but if that's the number they need, that's pretty cheap. Uh, for us to get involved and say that we are part of that system. Further discussion? Call for the vote, please. Yes, Your Honor. Clack? Aye. Mel <clears throat> Excuse me, Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. I do want to indicate again, uh, consistent with Council Member Bed Broughton's email to me, to me that he <laughs> would... Uh, recommend the passage of the Tri-Valley bus request. Okay, motion carries. Moving on. Uh, DCDP, Your Honor, uh, we, I have presented to you a memo that we received from the DCDP uh, regarding their requests. Uh, if you recall last time at our last meeting, there was a general request from the DCDP but no uh, breakdown. I did speak with one of their members after the council meeting and asked them to prioritize their requests uh, if they were not allotted the entire sum, and you have that in front of you. Uh, their proposed activities, as well as the prioritization of those uh, activities and those requests. What's the, the restoration enhancement of, you know, signs on what buildings? There was no specificity, <coughs> Council Member Erickson, as to what buildings, what they would say, um, <clears throat> other than that they are asking for that sum for those, as well as additional $2,100 for historic <laughs> building signage. I do know in the past they've um, actually designated, because like even I think the Halloween thing had like a historic signage on some of the buildings where the candy was in the past. So they have some pretty <coughs> extensive research on the historical pieces of those buildings downtown. Um, so. I was looking at the annual, you know, Chalk It Up Art Fest, you know, and then 5,000 to hire an artist. Um, can't they get some finance or some grant money or free money through the legacy dollars? You know, ain't that that the voters of Minnesota passed years ago? It's possible they could request that. Uh, it doesn't mean they'll automatically get that I, amount of money. I think just based on what I'm seeing here and like what they'd like to, like what their top priorities are, um, I've seen a lot of really good. Um, uh, turnout for the Tuesday nights in um, on the week, on, um, in the summertime. Um, I do love the idea of being able to like recognize the historical signages of our buildings downtown and I think that's another good way of cr increasing foot traffic. Um, I don't know how comfortable I would be with maybe doing the eight thousand dollars but maybe like if we did the top three for fifteen nine um, that would give them like at least a boost. I don't think we supported them at all last year, um, but I think these would be really good, a good step in the right direction um, for the, the work they have been doing. Um, that is correct, Council Member uh, Jurdy. There was no support given last year. I believe that requests were handled a bit differently last year. I believe those were determined by the city administrator at that time. Um, 
So that, that's the difference. But there was nothing given last year for the DCDP. When was, the last, the, when was the last time that we had uh, uh, supported the... I, uh, I don't do know, know the last time that they were actually supported with um, funds from the city directly. I think when that was started is when it was financed that first year. Steve, didn't they have an, a manager for that? Uh, yeah, they had part-time director, I guess. A director, it. yeah. But that was supposed to be self-sufficient over a couple of years, too, where they're going to get... But yeah. I, mean, I agree with Christy at a certain point, but I think 8000 you know, can cut that down to 4000 um, The benches downtown, I think, look nice. I see people using them. The other thing I agree with is the waste receptacles downtown. You know, cut that in half to 2500 just to get more of them downtown because having a store downtown, there's garbage flying all over, and I think you had more of those, more people would be apt to use them. As far as, I don't know, signage, I guess, I don't know. I think I just look at it. It's, it's great, but I'd like to see them maybe do a grant for that instead, um, try to get some, you know, some other way to fund that, my opinion. And I do like the Tuesday tunes. I think that draws people out. Yeah. To me, the 5000 well spent, I think, because it's been packed on there every time they've done it. So which ones were you looking at, Steve? I like number one, Tuesday tunes, and some benches, maybe cut them if, I don't know how many they're getting for eight grand, but maybe cut them in half this year, just because it is a tight year. And under their proposed budget, that would be matching. They would be trying to raise 16000 mm -hmm. for their for their benches. Um, those benches they put are in parks downtown, aren't they? Some of them, like the Mayor's Park yeah. and that. So couldn't they go through Park, Rec, park and Rec and try to get that grant? There's $5,000 there. I think they did. Didn't they funds. do that last year? I don't year? know. I thought that they, no. they didn't do a, a... No, I don't think no? so. No? No. Okay. Wasn't those benches that the Mayor Park put in by service group? I thought it was Rotary, Rotary. wasn't it? Rotary, Rotary yeah. has four benches. Rotary, yeah. But I mean, even... For downtown benches, I mean, we still got cost even on our side for the, you know, the concrete and putting yeah. them in, and yeah. I, I'm not sure what that all details. I guess my other concern, similarly to that, is if we do put more receptacles, like who's emptying them, like how often? Well, I know the, the city, on I'm not sure what day of the week, they go around and empty the downtown garbage receptacles. So it would just be more time. Downtown. On their end. So yeah, that, that more adds, manpower. adds more man hours to the city crew for doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you can pick it up there or you can pick it up off the curb. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think it just it's just more talking through that it's not just this. It is this plus the manpower. Was that 5000 for that two of matching? For the Tuesday two? No, for the 5000 receptacles. So they were going to do 10000 no, I don't. No, believe I think so. that was just. I don't believe so. I feel like on there, this one just says matching, and this one doesn't. I mean, I guess the other thing too is like if we're doing this based on what we like, that's great. If we're picking and choosing, but like this is their priority list too. So, do we give any consideration to what they see as a priority? So what you're saying well, is we could give them twenty thousand and let them play with it whether we want. Well, I, I mean, like, I just added the top three, and the top three are 15900 yeah. Right. So do we just address, we just, I, I would like to see that it's, like, actually allocated to something and not just thrown out there. Right. And that, that is your prerogative. You can do, as in the past, a block grant. They use yeah. it for whatever they want. Yeah. Or you could uh, prioritize and say, we will grant you X amount for this project, Y amount for that project. Uh, that's certainly within your prerogative. Did so Amy give him some money last year? No. You did not. Uh, the 5000 no, no. no. I thought not, she had You did not give any money. last year. Maybe it was Shannon, because one of them had a, through their... I want to let you know I have heard that you gave them no money last year. No, but no. over the last couple of years of them, maybe. Could but be. Yeah. Yeah. I know when they first started, I know we gave them money. Yeah. yeah. And it was yes. a lump sum, and they did so what they wanted, we, but we never got a report back. What it did we go through was. these lists and get a consensus and then vote on how much we're going to give them? I mean... Well, I guess, feeding off uh, Christie's comment, you know, they listed them, 
be in order of what they'd like to see, but um, I'm even looking at the rest, restoration enhancement of historic advertising signs on the building. I mean, you can give them 8,800, but I would almost like to see what the sign yeah. brings something to us and show us what the signs look like or what right. are they doing I think I think it could be something where we're allocating the money and then it's like kind of in tandem with our a department or us on how that looks so it's a joint effort. I don't think that's a bad idea. And then we can release funds once we have the proofs and things that we'd like to see. So possibly if you made the, got them into the budget this year and told them to show us at the end of the year, what they did with that money, yeah. that would go a long way as if you're gonna grant them money again the next budget cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I mean, uh, I'd like to see them be able to do what they wanna do on here, and if they're listening or whatever, they could hear kind of what our, we thought or what you know would be the priorities. Uh, like I say, I don't know that historical uh, you know, advertising signs and stuff, don't they have to have permission and don't they have to get you know, there's a lot to that to put signs on a building. Yeah, yeah. I think they've actually been working with this historical society. If I'm not correct, Don, do you recall? Yeah. I yeah, know that they've been they've working been, with they've some. Been working they've, 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 they've been working at, but they don't have a, you know, a really solid idea yet. They've been years ago. I was brought to the planning commission <coughs> about signs and how to do it downtown and what they were going to do. And the planning commission was waiting for just what you asked mm -hmm. of what they're going to look like. How are they going to go about? What is the rules and regulations behind it? And nothing. So that that is something that I think that we would we would have to have to. Right. What do, what does the council feel on the fifteen, twenty, ten? What do you think? I mean, if you did the first three that they have prioritized, it's, yeah, it's fifteen nine. nine. Yeah. And somebody mentioned twenty. And, and as I would have said on each one, remember this adds to right. what you Percentage. would be authorizing uh, for a levy, and that's what you should be deciding, just yeah. understand Well, that. yeah. what's gonna happen here is we're, we're approving these, and then we're gonna get to the end of the night with the levy number, and then we're gonna be asking our departments to cut. Right. Um, yeah. 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 Maybe it's not a, the money nothing on here is a necessity for, you know, for them to run, you know? And we had said before when they first started that you come to us with a project, we'll try fund it. Or help mm -hmm. fund it, you know, and that's kind of where we left it at. And I said yeah. forty thousand or fifteen nine or whatever. It's still that's a, a lot of percent of levy right there. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot other of things money. I think we need as a city, you know, then signage on a building. Well, we we know. asked our departments to cut back on their wants as much as they possibly can. And I'm looking at this list here. And it's to me, it's a lot of wants, not not needs. Well, There's of no course, need on but. There. I mean, I, the, the, the first two ones, I mean, I look at the, the Golden Link from my, from my eyes, it's, a, it's, it's, it's kind of a need. We need to do that for our elderly, for the community. And the Tri-Valley bus thing, that's something we need to do for our community as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I'm getting into the DCP and I'm looking at, you know, you know which isn't in the top three, but purchasing the, um, um, the the games, the cement games for which chalk one? it up, chalk it up. No, the um, just the cement games. Cement game tables to enhance downtown. Yeah, four. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. Well, the one I the one I look at is the number one, is the the festival. I think that's a great thing because it, it brings people downtown. It brings people walking around. I think that's really the only one that I agree with. Um, if we were to give them anything, I would go with the $5,000 for that just because it's a community event. A lot of people enjoy it. Mm -hmm. brings people downtown. Stores could feed off of that. I mean, it's, a, it, it's actually bringing, bringing something. Mm -hmm. And that's their number one. Yeah. yeah. So and if you're going to do it, might as well do their number one. Yeah. Along your same lines there, Joe, is the, um, the Chalk It Up Festival. I mean, that could bring people to town and generate I some... I think the difference, though, is that the Tuesday night is like multiple Tuesdays over the summer versus Chuck It Up's one event. Yep. Yeah, Chuck It Up was no, uh, sponsored the by the Rotary this year, so for, they gave seven hundred dollars to the prize Five thousand dollars goes right out of town too. That's my thing. You hire an artist, come in, boom, it's gone. They're gone with five thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. They're not returning investment into the community whatsoever. That's my problem with that one. But. Yeah. Well, on the Tuesday night, they also have like it's kind of like 
a little bit of a farmer's market kind of vendor thing yep. and music and food. And I think when we can have those festivals in the summertime and bring people downtown, I think it's a good draw. I think that's multi ultimately what the DCDP is about, right, is bringing that traffic downtown, yep. bringing business downtown. And if it's their number one, and if we're going to choose, pick and choose here, go with what they find to be a priority as well. I would support that. I mean, like I said, I, I agree. Think, I just, I, I seen, I seen all good of a thing. I make a motion we uh, do the five thousand dollars this year and for the Tuesday night tune summer yeah. music festival series. Yes. Got a motion by Steve. For second. 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 Second by Joe. Thank you. Any further discussion? I still think you know to tell them that you know, if you got a project that's really important, that's really going to benefit the community, come to us. I mean, that way we, you know, maybe can look at it instead of just throwing it out there. Yeah, here's twenty grand. Do what you want with it. If they got a good project, they did their homework, they bring it to us. I mean, that's when we make a decision. Say, well, that sounds pretty good. I mean, well, maybe even two and three. Like if you actually have a more developed project. <laughs> Because I think we all have a lot of questions still about what this actually means. What's and we can reconsider that at a later date. There's yeah. a question here. Whatever happened with the bridge lights? That's they remember. were not funded. They were not funded. Correct. I couldn't remember what happened with that. Yeah. But. And I think yeah. there became more to that than just putting lights. There's a lot of stuff with DOT and things, a lot of red tape that wasn't necessarily addressed yeah. so initially. So by them too? Are they back to the drawing board on that? That was in their initial proposal. Yeah. Was the lights as well. I think there was a lot of things, even if it was a go, I think there was a lot of yeah, things our <laughs> IT had to do too. Yeah. And and with the railroad. Can right? we, do we call for the question? Yeah. Call for the question. Vote. So, Your Honor, I have Council Member Steve Erickson uh, for a sec first, and then Council Member Joe Kressel for $5,000 to the DCDP. For Roll Tuesday call, please. please. The Tuesday tune. Yes, that was a specific yep. condition. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, Clack. Aye. Melby. Aye. Dirty. Aye. Erickson. Aye. Briggs. Aye. Cavalier. Aye. Kressel. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Okay, let's get moving. The next one is the SBDC, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, it's a request uh, consistent <coughs> with uh, last year's request for $10,000 for the F Small Business Development Center that is located on uh, in the VTP, Valley Tech Park. Um, and this provides services for businesses uh, in the area. Uh, we are one of two entities that support it in terms of cash dollar amounts, East Grand Forks, and Crookston support it. We, in addition, give uh, rent free for uh, the SBDC um, at the Valley Tech Park based upon the last cash lease that we executed, uh, $400 a month, that would be worth about $4,800 in value. Uh, we don't give that money, that is the value that is available to the SBDC. Uh, they are all supported, also supported by the University of Minnesota Crookston. Uh, for those of you on the um, CHEETA board, they made a presentation to us, um, I'm gonna say approximately six weeks ago to eight weeks ago, uh, uh, documenting uh, the value that uh, SBDC brings to the area and brings to our city. Um, and you are su uh, supplied materials documenting uh, what they uh, believe they bring to the community. But it's, um, they, they service a bunch of different communities, but they're not getting supported financially by all, none of them, probably but two. My recollection of the uh, budget and information we were given is East Grand Forks and the city of Crookston support them with direct uh, cash payments. Uh, I, did, I do believe, if I remember correctly, I asked at that presentation if you needed to pay to get services. No, you do not. I asked if uh, a member were to withdraw their support, would they still receive services? 
And the answer was yes. So wasn't that one that we dropped? Wasn't it 20 grand they got at one point? I think they, they did receive at one point $20,000 uh, from the city of Crookston. I can't tell you when that ended. Um, and they're I mean, supposed I, to make them self-sufficient over three ahead. years, yeah. too. Right. Yep. I mean, I also think that this 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 request shouldn't be something the taxpayers of Crookston should have to pay for. If, it, if we did do a donation, I feel it's more in Cheetah's wheelhouse to make a donation um, other than the city of Crookston. I, agree. I also really struggle with Thief River not supporting this at all because I know there's a lot of business and a lot of support that's gone that way. Um, and it just... It, it's hard to feel like they're just reliant on what we're giving and that they're not being as proactive as they could be and looking for other donations. We certainly could um, move this off and uh, deny the request here, uh, but return it to Cheetah for consideration. Uh, it is in the Valley Tech Park. It is an economic development um, and the services provided involve uh, business plans. Uh, I'll make that motion, Your Honor. I'll second it. Motion. Um, I understood the motion to be deny the request, right. but refer it to Cheetah for action at its next meeting. Is okay. That Got right. a motion by Don, a second by Clayton. For their discussion. I did, uh, we talked about, but you know, if, if we're gonna Thief River doesn't pay a dime and they get businesses, the business get brought to Thief River, we're paying Thief River to. Economic development. I yeah. just really struggle should, with that. They should pay yeah. some bucks there. Okay. Call for the vote, please. Yes, Your Honor. Platt? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jerdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Russell? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Oh, Scruffy Tails. All right. Uh, the next one is Scruffy Tails, Your Honor, formerly known as the Polk County uh, Humane Society. Uh, scruffy Tales exists here in the city of Crookston. I do have information uh, pursuant to your request at the last council meeting. I did contact uh, Scruffy Tales and I spoke with their uh, manager. She indicated to me that they do have one other contract other than with uh, the city of Crookston. That's Marshall County. They do have a contract and they do receive a monthly payment from Marshall County but unlike Crookston, they do not have reserved kennels. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember correctly, Crookston uh, Police Department has a contract, well, the city of Crookston, but the police department has a contract. Uh, we pay a certain amount per month, and we have five kennels specifically reserved, and we then pay a daily fee if we bring in animals. Marshall County does have a monthly contract. Uh, they do pay a daily fee when they bring animals, but the manager indicated rarely does Marshall County bring animals. Uh, she indicated Polk County does not pay anything. Uh, they less than rarely receive animals and they only take them in very, very, she said like very five times, unusual circumstances. <laughs> and when Polk County does bring animals, they do not pay anything. So where do the animals go? I can't believe that in Polk County has less issues with animals than the city of Kirkston. <laughs> well, I just I don't know. Uh, just curious. Yeah, you just said they rarely, 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 <laughs> rarely, rarely, very, my, rarely. My, other, my other thing, my other thought on this is like, if they're asking for $10,000, why don't they give us a, a further severe discount when it comes to our other budget with the police department and holding animals if this is a need? And the need, they want to replace and repair kennels. Um, they did specify that they need some kennel replacement, uh, not just because of us, but generally speaking. Uh, they do rely on donations and grants, and they are soliciting, as you might expect, donations and grants. Is there some way to make this a matching? You can do whatever you want. I guess I would just, I would like to see in good faith that they're trying to find other grants or other things and that it's just not reliant upon us and because we also are paying them to do this other service for us. And I know that they've received some grants and funding recently too, so I'd really like to see 
this be like something that's matched, if nothing else? You know, the city, though, we, we get their services and we pay for them. But I don't know that we're in a position to make donations to help them out. We're in tough shape right now with what our budget's going to be. So well, this is essentially a request for a donation. Okay. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's more of a donation than a, you know. And there's many service clubs in that that are always looking for something to do that they could probably work that out. I mean, and we have increased the rate uh, per month significantly. Yeah. And we have also increased our daily rate uh, percentage-wise significantly in absolute dollars. It's not huge, but we, we did enter into a contract with increased monthly rate and increased daily rate. So do you, have we received a copy of what their uh, amount of money or income into that as far as grants or budget? We have not. That would we also be of interest. That would be of interest. Yeah, what their budget is, and because I know years ago uh, they would have uh, fundraisers and different things like that, and then they would receive some grants. So I guess I'd like to see a budget of some type. To is that privately owned now? Since they changed the name of it, who owns it? it? Must be a nonprofit. I think, I think it's, it's a nonprofit. It's a, private, it's a board. nonprofit yeah. entity. Darren, have we ever had a problem where we didn't have room? They didn't have room for a stray animal. Hate to put you in the spot, but you may or may not know that. But um, you know, occasionally we have, you know, we've walked into some weekends where we've been full, and they said they might have some difficulties taking some animals. But overall, we've been able to work it out with them. Where we've had kennels available. So, like Administrator Reynolds said, we buy five kennels a month, if you want to call that, and uh, additional kennels would be made available. They have pop-up kennels that they could put in their garage if needed. Um, but yeah, we, uh, other than that, that's about it. I was curious, if we're getting our money's worth, so to speak. <laughs> Darren, do you know of anywhere else Polk County's putting their animals besides here? You know, I don't think that they do the enforcement like we do as much, you know, I, I don't know sure. East Grand Forks, I'm sure they work something out with them, uh, the other smaller cities in the county. Yeah, I just really don't know. Um, okay. I know they don't deal with dangerous animals or anything as much as we do either. We've kind of advised or helped them on some of those cases in the past, but like uh, Corky said, we're probably doubled our budget and expenses and with the new contract and everything that we would be, you know, it was $100 a month that went up, but the daily rate, if you remember, went from four to we're being charged 18, we're charging the public 20. Um, but I mean, we, we were at 250 a month and I believe it was <laughs> 350 a month for our five kennels. Like we went from four dollars a day to eighteen dollars a day, day for each animal we bring in. Mm -hmm. So we were currently spending anywhere, roughly five to six thousand a year. Uh, we will, in excess of you know ten thousand, we're looking probably this year. We budgeted ten thousand uh, from all the audits and everything. We could make best guess, but mm -hmm. it's uh, the last two months have been roughly twenty five hundred to two thousand a month. Now this is our busiest month, so we're obviously when the cold weather gets, sure. you know, it'll, it'll slow down, but. It's definitely a service we need. It's definitely a service that's important, but yeah. Okay. That's Thank I, you. I guess my concern is I don't want to see it go away, but at the end of the day, if they already have a budget and they're running off it, this is a gift, and I don't think this is a year to give a gift. Tabled? I'd like I to see a motion. budget. I'll motion, make that motion table. table. Not a motion. I'd rather make a motion to decline. Right. But, well, well there's a motion. you can ask for a motion that's been made to support, then you have to ask for a second. Second. Okay. For the ten thousand dollars. Can we put a stipulation in wanting to see what the budget's looking like so we have a more educated decision going forward? Maybe we need to put whatever stipulation you want. <laughs> I mean, like the other thing too is I wonder if like ultimately if they need this ten thousand and one dollars, I, I would be more likely to do a matching of five and then they have to fundraise the other five or something like that. But before I said anything, I'd like to see what they are getting and what their budget looks like on a year to basis. I don't think it's been run better now than it ever has. Absolutely. I mean, for sure, because they've never been in here. And yeah. uh, their presentation was good. I mean, they, they, mm -hmm. I think they're on the right path, but yeah. this is just bad timing. Yeah. 
they said that there was a motion by Councilmember Briggs and seconded by Cavalier for the ten thousand and one dollars. No, mine was to table it. Yeah, table. To yeah. deny. So table. 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 No, he said the table. Table it. Yeah. Table. I asked. Table. That's why I said. You want to table it? Yes. That's right. Okay. So it's great. Table this. So you understand what that means? It can be brought back right. at any time. Yep. yep. And we'd like just some more information on the operating budget. Yeah, we'd like, yep. to, I'd like to have some more information from the police department to talk to uh, the chief of police in the future. If not right now. That's okay. Okay, I got a motion to table it by Clayton and Don. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Flat? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Wellness in the woods. <coughs> Moving on. Wellness in the woods. Oh, oh sorry. One, one other question on that. To table it, it's it's it can't get put into this year's budget anymore now. That that's Enough. not. So it's it's out of this year's budget, but it's the request is tabled. It could be brought up by any one of you to remove it from the table and consider it, but it would have to fall into a different category uh, to see if we have funds and under what department or how we would handle. Okay. But doesn't it have to be tabled to a specific date or with the uh, in more information brought forward or what's the conditions on that? Well, it's, it's just tabled. It means it just sits there until called forward. Um, makes a motion. If you want to make uh, amend the motion to say a specific date, you can do that. I just I thought you had to give a specific date when you table something. Well, usually or else it gets it, brought up at the next meeting and the and next it brought meeting back the next in two meeting. weeks. Well, can we also with the stipulation of knowing what their operating budget is? If you've tabled it, we can bring it up at the next regularly scheduled council meeting. Uh, next Monday. Next Monday, if we and we can get a budget, see if they have one. I'm sure they do. Okay. I will. I will contact them. Okay. Questions asked. Moving on. Wellness in the Woods is a <clears throat> mental health provider. Uh, what it is is an organization, a private nonprofit organization that provides uh, over the telephone or um, internet <coughs> FaceTime access for individuals to contact uh, licensed counselors, uh, mental health professionals, to discuss their issues and problems. It is free. There is no charge. Uh, similar services are provided by Aluma uh, in Crookston, uh, but Wellness in the Woods is based out of, I believe, central Minnesota. Um, I want to say Eagle Bend. I'm not sure. Um, but the individual who I spoke with uh, previously worked for Aluma here in Crookston. Um, and he has asked for $5,000 uh, to help with marketing of their services. They have the services to provide, uh, they have the people to provide it, but they need marketing, they need to get their availability out into the public. I just think with Aluma providing a lot of the same services and also with mental health being such a hot button topic, there's so many grants and things out there. And for this dollar amount, and already knowing that we've already pushed ourselves to probably 4% at this point, 5%, I just don't feel comfortable funding this. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I make a motion. We decline this one, Your Honor. I'll second that. We've got a motion by Delane, a second by Steve. Further discussion? Well, isn't that Northwest Mental Health set up? Yes. That is a Aluma. Aluma. That's their new name. Yes. That's Northwest it. Mental Health has changed its name to Aluma. And not knowing where it's budgeted from, where do they get their budget? I mean, there's too much information out there we don't yeah. know. Maybe next year to look at it and come back with some information. Sounds good. Roll call, please. Platt? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Russell? Aye. Motion carries. Moving on. 
Oxcart Day. Oxcart uh, Day Festival has requested the sum of $6,000 undesignated to be able to use it for the purposes that they need, um, including all that they do in, in terms of marketing, getting people here, uh, those type of activities. <coughs> I guess, I guess I guess I don't like the idea of it being undesignated like we were kind of mm -hmm. to be true to the rest of these ones we we kind of made um some stipulations that you know I think Christy made a comment saying you know we wanted we wanted to go for specific things and Steve made a comment earlier about you know um I don't know where I was going with this but you said something to the fact that um br oh bring it bring bring your ideas in your wants in and if we can support them at the time then we can I think that's how we should handle well in the past you know we've always given six thousand but that was for the fireworks and yeah. I yeah. I agree that I don't like yeah. just to give them six grand and use I would wherever. be more in favor of it if it was for the fireworks yeah I, I would I would I would be day. I would be very disappointed if like we gave them the six grand and then they just decided not to have the fireworks <laughs> And then we're like, well, <laughs> right. you know, where'd that money go to? Because um, I think yeah. the fireworks are an awesome yep. thing for our city. And I think every resident gets could take part of it. Right. That's the thing. Right. So I, I would make a motion that we give six thousand dollars if it was used for the fireworks. I think they should come back. Yeah, I think so too. Thoughts? You think it should what? I think if. They want six grand. They, I think we deny it. They should come back. Yeah. And as for donation of six grand for fireworks. Or can we just say it's allocated to fireworks? I mean, th but this way, this, this way, it's in our budget now. Right. Right. Because if it doesn't we're do. We're preparing for it. We know. Don't you have a Listen, if they come to us later and it's not in our budget, we're going to give it for fireworks. Right. Yeah. Who's who's making the motion, or has someone made a motion yet? Uh, I have Councilmember Clatt. Make Making the motion for six thousand dollars to donate the fireworks to Oscar. Okay, I got it. I will second that. And a second by Chris. I guess if they don't use it for fireworks, they don't get it. I mean, yeah. right. it's simple. Right. It's uh, feel good about that. <laughs> no I think fireworks. it's a city's kind of our duty to give something to that festival because it is a, mm -hmm. a big <laughs> thing, <laughs> biggest thing for Kirkston. Yeah, yeah. but historically, that's what we've given it for. Right. So we'd like to continue on that because we see that it is, as Steve said, something that everybody can participate in. Okay. Mm. Motion by Delane, second by Christy. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Flat? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Cressel? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Item 3.02 is discussion on preliminary tax levy. You got the numbers cranked up, Corky? I sure do. Just give me a time to add up and make changes because of what you've generously done. Yeah, I just got it. Back up to 22%. Give you a history as you know I'll make it brief uh, we originally started out at 37.5 uh, in our presentation last council meeting we were able to tell you that we had paired that to a 25 percent levy increase uh, consistent with your instructions I have as well as Ryan have met with department heads as a group department heads individually and we have defined for them, uh, pursuant to your instructions, to delineate and differentiate between wants and needs. And I will tell you that your department heads went about that task very professionally. Uh, they went about that very diligently. And they were able to identify a number of items 
in the capital improvement plans that we remove uh, from next year's capital improvement plans. Uh, after doing that, we got the levy, proposed levy down to 18.83%. Now, one of the things I do want to share with you is that, and I want to be very clear with you and as well as the citizens of our community, a levy increase of 18.835% does not mean a tax increase of 18.835%. This is somewhat complicated, but I'll try to make it as simple as, as I can. <coughs> the percentage is applied to your city's tax capacity. That's the value of your homes in your community. And the values of the homes in our community have increased by approximately half a million dollars in the last year. So the levy percentage increase is spread out over a more um, inflated, if you will, tax base. So that's a good thing. If we apply an 18.835 levy increase, what that means essentially is that we'll have a 4.27 tax increase on the amount that you pay for the city of Crookston's taxes. Not the county's taxes, not the school district's taxes, not special assessments, but essentially that's how much your taxes would go up. Uh, we did a calculation uh, on a random $250,000 uh, home, and the tax increase on that home was approximately $76. Now, again, those are estimates. Nothing is determined finally until we have our final uh, levy amount that's set in December. What we are talking about tonight is what is our preliminary uh, tax levy increase that we propose. What would it be? On, that was on a three? That's on a $250,000 home. $250,000 and that was 4.27% 4. 4. increase at the 18.8% three level that department heads were able to achieve. Now, based on your actions earlier, I just did a rough calculation. That's about a 4.75% increase on the amount of the levy. Not amount of dollars, but of the levy. So that would levy. put you at approximately, I'm going to call it 23.5%. Now, I do want to share with you, East Grand Forks is at 19%, with the possibility of going to 21, just as a means of comparison. How about Thief River? Do Thief you know? River has not published theirs yet. Okay. So what about taking some out of the reserves to cover some of this? Certainly a possibility. Um, we have taken money out of reserves in the past. Um, what I have suggested to department heads and um, to you in the past is it seems financially appropriate and advisable that you fund one-time purchases from reserves. You can fund any type of expense with reserves, but if you fund ongoing expenses with reserves, not only do your reserves go down, but you don't earn any money on those reserves and you locked yourself in almost to continuing that funding. Have you guys identified those one-time purchases that are in some of these budgets that we can address? We have identified some. Okay. Um, we have not identified all that are possible. And I do want to tell you, uh, consistent with what you've expressed in the past, is we have attempted this year to make a budget that increases 
the salaries of our employees to hopefully reach at or near average or median when we compare ourselves to other cities of the same size. That has been our emphasis. Mm -hmm. um, for all departments? For all departments. Now some departments are closer to the average than others, so they have not had as significant a proposed increase. Some are significantly, significantly below average of the cities which we selected uh, for comparison. East Grand Forks, Deep River Falls, Montevideo, um, Grand Rapids uh, are some of the cities that we, Virginia, that we selected based on populations, based on also type of economies within those cities, regionality, where they're located relative to us. Uh, we did not select what are often referred to as metro or urban cities. Uh, we tried to select greater Minnesota, outstate, however you want to refer to it, cities. Uh, and um, Jordan was an immense help in gathering data for us. Uh, Ryan and I have spent considerable time trying to make this as um, easy to understand and give you a means of comparison because this is such a significant year. Mm -hmm. um, as I told you, we have plugged in 40% for utility costs. We can look at that. Um, we have a little better data now than two months ago. Uh, we can look at some reserves for one-time expenditures, um, if that's your criteria, if that's what you want. I, um, I, I, I like the idea of um, looking at the one-time expenses and, and then pulling them out of reserve and, and using reserves for those one-time expenses and then seeing what the, the, the levy number looks like then instead of, <clears throat> instead of just pulling a lump sum of a lump number, say how much do we have to pull from our reserves to get us to 15? I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather look at it the one-time purchases and, and then maybe possibly pulling them out of reserves rather than that. I mean, I, <clears throat> I mean, is there any, I mean, Steve and I have talked a little bit about the, the amount of reserves that we have on hand and I tend to agree with what Steve is saying. We, we're a city that's operating where not many cities are debt free, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I would say it's less than not very many. <laughs> right. What would we say the percentage of our operating budget is right now that we have saved in reserves? If I remember the auditor's report, it was in the 80 percentile. Um, I believe she also told us that typical is 25 to 40 percent mm -hmm. in reserves relative to your operating budget. What I would like to see tonight is that we uh, establish what we want our maximum levy to be. And we can work on the reserve question after that's sure. uh, settled uh, mm -hmm. with your input. Because right now we're, we're at, what, eight, 18? Well, originally, before your actions tonight, I would say that a, a conservative estimate now would be 23% with what you've uh, assigned for uh, additional expenditures tonight. So, so the one thing I want to try to avoid through all of this budget, and I mean, um, we put a lot of work into the, you know, going through the budgets, and then only, and it, it and it's frustrated me a little bit, only get to the end and saying, you know, as council members, we want this, we want, we want this department to do this, we want this department to do that, then get to the end and just say, well, that's too high, it doesn't feel good to me. I want to I want to lower it to this just because this number makes me feel better. It'll make me sleep better at night. So we're we're at a point within our city. Are we going to continue to kick this can down the road and let our our our, our equipment and our buildings deteriorate continue to to get into the shape that they're in, or or do we start to take some action and 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 do something about it? Yeah, that that and that action is a cost the community to to. Upkeep on some of the stuff. But I, I thought that, that to we were been. Delay and it's, oh, I'm sorry. I, didn't. I thought that we'd been looking at going through and checking our buildings, checking our equipment, and seeing 
you know, what infrastructure, you know, kind of what do we need to go out and set the, the world straight in Crookston? Mm -hmm. And then possibly going out and bonding for that or figuring out a way to, to take some uh, surplus and some bonding or whatever and get ourselves in a good shape so that, you know, it's one thing not to owe anybody anything. It's another thing if everything's falling apart. Right. right. We have had a building study done. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg Heft and I have worked on that, and we did receive some preliminary information today. Uh, we've had to give them a little nudge to get that, and we told them we were budgeting. Uh, but we were told, I believe today, and correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, that we would receive a report by the end of this week. So we will have that. Um, and again, what I'm suggesting to you is, again, this is a preliminary levy. We can go down from that, but we can't go up. Sure. So I can tell you that there are things that we have already preliminarily identified as potentially funded from reserves. So if, if you were to set this at 23, we can identify some items that can get that lower. Okay. I don't think there's a magical number that you can just point your fingers at and say it's got to be X. What you have to convince yourselves of in this whole process, and we have to get that done by December 28th for our final, is that you think the citizens of Crookston are being well served by the levy that you put on them. Um, and that does, if, if you were to set it at 23 or 22, or I can tell you we can find some capital expenditures and maybe even some ongoing expenditures that can be funded by reserves uh, to reduce that. I can't tell you what that number is, but I tell you we, we can reduce it. Kirk, did you mention before as at 23.5, is that what you had mentioned? After addition of these numbers tonight, and that's what you've decided, that's great. It just pushes it up so that, um, and that may be the number you arrive at, ultimately. Mm -hmm. uh, I suspect not. I suspect mm -hmm. that um, with the work of our department heads, uh, I'm, and Ryan, the financial director myself, we can find some things. Mm -hmm that bring that down. Yeah. Uh, I'd like so, to see the numbers of, you know, we've drawn off reserve before, so it's like, you look at the budget, okay, and we haven't had good numbers, so it may be skewed, but at the end of the day, over the last three, four years, where we've taken it out of reserves, and the balance at that particular time, the following year, yeah. we're ahead of the game again, so we never really dropped in reserves. Right. And, and you gotta look at that, and whether the numbers so, were, yeah. You know, well then, I'll, go ahead. Chris. I was just going to say, I think going back to what Delaney was saying earlier, ultimately at the end of the day, I think what we're worried about when we say kicking it down the road is that we've we've cut out things that are needed or need to be maintained or things of that nature, and that I think is where worrisome is that if we're up upping our our, our tax levy and we're not addressing these things mm -hmm. that are on fire or falling off walls or disintegrating or <laughs> almost broken, right? So I think making sure that if we're going to do a, lower, a higher tax rate, that we're addressing the issues that have been issues forever. Well, I agree with I agree with you, Chris. Yes, kind of on the lines of what I was going to say, what they were talking about. This is where I think the reserve should be used. Well, yeah, not not just to well, lower yeah. it, well, because then you still have these things hanging out there and needed to be fixed or done. Right. But those are perfect spots for the reserve to come out of instead of just to lower to make, so to speak, us feel better or where we right. need to be. And there's no question, so I think council members, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. I so just I think, can't tell you, right now. hey, it's going to be right. 12 or 14 yeah. or without. So I guess my, <clears throat> my question to you, Corky, is you've had the conversations with our department heads. You feel that what they've pulled out so far gets us to this 23% without being detrimental to our city, and that we, at a later time, if we agree today 23%, knowing that there's a good possibility that we can pull from reserve from those one-time purchases or things of that nature, if that's where we're going. But I just want to make sure that we're just not repeating 
the same issue we've had every year where we keep not maintaining or addressing the issues that we've been having. Yes, I can tell you this is a unique year. One, because we received federal funding, ARPA funds, mm -hmm. lost revenue funds that have allowed us to do a number of things. Most importantly, we're addressing some of the systemic difficulty that we've had with wages. We have had uh, job openings posted for weeks with no applicants. We have had officers from our police department leave because of the type of situation they were in within our department, not fully staffing. We have had employees of public works suggest they needed to leave because of our wage situation. So we have attempted in this proposal to address that very significant situation. I believe one council member said, we can have the best trucks in the world, but we don't have drivers, it doesn't do us any good. That's what we've attempted to do initially here. Um, again, preliminary, preliminarily only, um, it, we'd be at about 23.5%. So, so, you I know, mean, over the years, if I could, Your Honor, over the years, we've, we've always discussed our, our, uh, our net tax capacity. And, and when that goes up, you know, you almost have to go up with it in order, otherwise the taxes are going down for folks. So you got more people, say you're trying to get a million dollars out of 100 people, that's the one number. And if you're trying to get a million dollars out of 120 people, that number goes down, and that's what we don't look at. I, I think the way it's plotted out here, it's a, just about 11% that we could go up and not increase anybody's taxes. It seems to me you have inside information. I, <laughs> and I'm the question, glad These about are the that. questions that I asked, and that's, these are what I got. Yes, and we talked to the same person you did. Because I talked to him, <laughs> I talked about it last year, and I couldn't get that through here, uh, yeah, and that's why we I went could, early. At this point in time, if we had a 11% levy increase, there would be a net effect of no increased taxes that people would pay. And that, that is a direct function of tax capacity, values of your businesses, values of your homes. You can actually increase the levy and decrease taxes. And, and it does that's not a, do that at 23%. <coughs> right, but that's what we've been trying to do with getting these extra homes and having these abatements and, and helping with the downtown businesses and such. You're getting your net tax capacity to a bigger number. So it's just being spread out by more people. Right. Mm -hmm. Or and, increased value of the homes, of the homes. in which the same number of people yeah. live. So right. again, I can't emphasize enough Distinguish, make a distinction between percent the levy goes up and percent that the taxes that citizens pay, they're different. Mm -hmm. And remember, so, we're just dealing with Crookston. Yeah. Only Crookston, no yeah, school yeah. district, yeah. no so. county, no special assessments. It's only Crookston. what Crookston pays. And that's so why you're, you're looking for a number tonight. So I mean, based on... What we did earlier tonight, I mean, I, I, I say we just run with the 23 now. 23 and a half. 23, 23 and a half. And then yeah. look, at, look at what you can pay out of the budget currently with, with, with um, reserves. And I can tell you your department heads are up to that task. Okay. They're aware that it could be coming because even at 18% that we figured originally, I had put them on notice that we would be meeting and in all likelihood being asked to search for uh, items that we could pay with reserves. So do you need a, you need a motion, motion for that? Um, mm. I think we just actually just will have to meeting. pass that motion on uh, next meeting at the council okay. meeting on the uh, uh, general consensus. So you're just looking for consensus is, uh, right now? Yeah, consensus because yeah. I'd like with one for you then. Yeah showing what we've done between now and next council meeting Sounds to good. get that reduced, knowing that if all else fails, we can have a preliminary levy certified to the county at 23 and a half, 
and work from there, but try to before next council meeting see where we could maybe get it. Right. Sure. So I'd like to see good. Where you're where you're getting your cuts and whatever, because like I said, that, you know, if we were broke, I could see it, but we're, we're taxing the community and we're sitting with eighty five percent of. So why can't we should have thirty percent? That's, that's part of the yeah. conversation that we can have so next it's just time, right? We'll not right. Go for that because so why yeah. can't we get yeah. to the point that that at the end of the budget season they say okay. We have this much dollars left over from from last year that we didn't use. Why can't we automatically put that into whatever the percentage would be for the levy? I just like to see the numbers. Yeah. Okay, this is what we pulled out of reserve for 2022. Right. And this was the balance. At the end of the year, this is the balance of reserves because that number was up over and above where it was. Right. And we took 80 or eight, it was 80, 90,000. So what you're saying is we got just our, the interest, we got our, whatever it builds itself. We got to remember okay, that. We got our reserves right now, but we don't really need to grow it at this point. We should. No, no. I don't want to be. You can't be funded and relying on that. I get that, but at the end of the day, yeah, we can't tax the citizens when we're yeah. sitting with eighty at eighty some percent. It's just yeah. impossible. Right. Yeah, I'd like to address that when we come back and talk about where we pull money to, because like if best practices are saying that we should be much lower than that. I'm so worried that at some point this gonna, the state's going to look at what we have in reserves and wonder why they should be funding us. Because I'm sure cuts will be coming down the line, especially with recession talk and all, all goods so, being so much better, that we really need to be what best practices is saying. I mean, like, that was in the 101 training for elected officials, right? And we can, be, so, we can tell you, uh, if not next council meeting, between now and December, where those reserves are going to be spent. Yeah. And at because what percentage we will still be in right. It's a clear directive that I'm getting, a more than a consensus. We need to spend some of our reserves, one, because it's the right thing to do, two, because we have needs, and three, we want to make sure that we are following best practices, and best practices <laughs> is not to have 80% in reserves. Correct. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, accurate. Sounds good. So the consensus is? 23.5 for now. Preliminary, correct? Yep. Well, if good. nothing Preliminary. else happens, 23.5. But department heads and I will be working with Ryan between now and next council meeting to come with a way to use reserves to get that down. My, my question here is, is if we're going to do a preliminary 23.5, and that's evidently nobody wants to be there, why are we starting at that number? I Just mean, to give us a, yeah. right now, if nothing else happens, We'd be there. That's a preliminary. But why do we even got to make a recommendation? I'd rather see the stuff come to us, and then it's like, okay, now we I, I will because say. Because we don't, okay. don't want to put you behind the eight ball next <laughs> Monday night because we have a deadline of yeah. September 30th. Well, like I said, I just, you know, yeah. we got I, a lot of work to do in information before I'd even think about a 23.5, I guess, in my own yeah, opinion. Yeah. But, but I, we're not agreeing to it. We're just saying we're not going any higher than that, and that no, there's right. definitely the ability to go a lot lower than that. Yeah, well. But if this is what all the numbers are saying for now, let's start there and move down. That's all we're doing is identifying and that number. I get that. That's your directive, and we're yeah. going to go find yeah. ways to do that. We're reducing from 23.5, yeah. But I do see what Steve is saying is why rattle the jungle if you if you're not going to have right. to. But I think it's prudent to do it just to set it up, telling them what it could possibly be. Because yep. this is all. I would imagine everybody's phone would ring tomorrow morning if you say, yeah, 23.5 sounds great. You know what I mean? Right. No, like, nobody's but that's agreeing. no one saying that. Nobody's, nobody's agreeing, agreeing to 23. Right. right. No. We're not taking a vote on it tonight. No, I'm just saying that it seems high to even start out at. You know, I'd say 20% uh, and yeah, go down right because well. I would hope we would get somewhere down below 20%. You know, I, I just so think do you just take out everything we just agreed upon then for the additional percentage? Well, we'll figure out something. I mean, no, if you look at it. No, saying that if we're planning on taking it out of, out of reserves, reserves, you can just as well tell them you're going to do it now and drop the percentage down. But we don't. No, like I said, we're we not survive survive. It's, it's, it's we an arbitrary. We need some flexibility so. among department heads to get there. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is not a final. No. Okay. We good? Good with that. Yeah. Good. Sounds good. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.